Transformation. The Oxford Dictionary provides a succinct definition, which is as follows. A marked change in form, nature, or appearance. But the exact nature of this change is left up to your interpretation or your point of view. Now, these three words in turn constitute the definition of another, perspective. But what's the relationship between the two? Well, once you're able to transform your perspective, suddenly you can make one transformation blossom to hundreds. Something as seemingly pointless as my talk may suddenly become insightful. So please, I'm hoping you can understand why I made it like a lost puppy in the next 10 minutes because I haven't spoken in front of an audience quite this large before. But hey, if you can understand me, then you'll have something that's known as empathy. It's what forms the basis of our moral compass. The thing we use to decide what is good and what is bad by putting yourself in another's shoes. It's the, it's the, they're the center to be adhered to. The thing we use to reflect and be proud of ourselves and also the thing we use to judge the goodness of others. For example, we may be considered good if we do something like help someone else, whereas we may be considered evil if we do something like hurt someone else. Many believe that this moral compass is the pinnacle of humanity, a thing we should aspire to follow. But are they right? Well, not exactly. Because good and evil are morally gray areas, as you'll see with just a small change in perspective. Let me begin by saying that I have a lot of free time even though I really shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's much more fun to pretend to be a philosopher in the shower than to do any of Mr. Baxter's homework. <laughs> but anyway, I remember this one time I was uh, going through another existential crisis, you know, like questioning the meaning of life, wondering what's the purpose of it all. Then I, saw, then I managed to think of something truly horrifying, as if none of the things I said before were horrifying in the slightest. So, I thought that what if one day I was given the option to save the world, but had to bear the blame as the one who caused it? Would I do it? I thought to myself for a while and realized I couldn't. I wouldn't. And that's because I wouldn't get the rewards I thought I was entitled to from society. After all, if I was to, if I was to save the world, I thought there should at least be a statue in front of the school in, in my honor, like my face painted all, over, all across the walls. But that won't happen. What would be gratitude would turn to blood-curdling hatred. And you see, despite my nihilistic tendencies, I always thought I was a morally good person. Like, I would hold the door for old ladies, I said please and thank you, you know, all that good stuff. But you see, after, after thinking about this, my moral compass went haywire. Because I realized, I wasn't an angel, nor was I some sort of demon. I was something in between. I was human. And then I began to see the rest of the world as an extension of this belief. Even the people I hated. Because once you dehumanize something, once you see someone as monsters, you fail to recognize their emotions. You won't be able to empathize with them. And that's why you won't be able to understand with them. However, if you peel back the one-dimensional lens in which you see the world, you may begin to see the monster, uh, see, begin to see the man behind the monster suit. And what better examples of monsters than comic book supervillains, like Thanos. Thanos has been the poster boy for supervillains for many reasons, that infamous snap that killed half the population being one of them. But that's not what cements Thanos' legacy as one of the greatest supervillains of all time. No. Rather, it's the fact that Thanos was a villain with a heart. Beneath his superficial callousness as a warrior, Thanos cared for life. He watched his own homeworld, tear itself apart due to overpopulation, and resolved to change this resolved to quell the cosmos of this plague by killing half of its inhabitants. It didn't even spare his own daughter, Gamora. And Thanos' vision, set in stone, is the very definition of the ends justifies the means. He did something that I earlier said I couldn't even comprehend to do. Yet he is the villain. He made the ultimate sacrifice, a reputational one. But in his eyes, he was the hero. And that just proves that uh, heroism and villainy are just two sides of the same coin. What side you're looking at is a matter of perspective. But back to that infamous snap. You see, killing half the population isn't something unique to, the, to Thanos. It's been done before by this man, Adolf Hitler. Hitler was in many ways like Thanos. He was a tyrant, he was an oppressor. He was a symbol of fear and suffering. And also like Thanos, he fashioned himself as some sort of chosen one. 
because he was the one to lift Weimar Germany, he, he thought he was the one to lift Weimar Germany up from the humiliation it suffered under the Treaty of Versailles, the bringer of the new golden age. And to a German at the time, he was just that. He was determination incarnate. He suffered a grueling childhood, being, greet being frequently by his father, having to watch the one person he loved, his mother, die before his very eyes, and then have his art Korean art torn to shreds. But he persevered. He found his talents as an orator and picked up the pieces of a broken Germany, willing it to rise once more from the ashes. Right? Well, no. What seemed to be a hero origin story quickly turned sour. And the rest is history. Once again, that just proves again that heroism and villainy are two sides of the same coin. And it's all a matter of perspective in the end. But granted, seeing the world through the eyes of Thanos or Hitler is a bit impossible. So why don't we dump down the scale of things a bit and start seeing the world through mine? Let me begin by saying that I used to really hate these uh, try to understand other people sort of talks. I mean, to me they seem really sort of pointless. Like, I would masquerade inside my head as some sort of super realistic guy who wouldn't be a sheep to society's expectations. But looking back, I know now that that's just me not willing to accept new ideas because it would compromise my own beliefs. And I think it's a byproduct of something I call thinking I was the protagonist. And this was when I thought I was the main character. I was special. My friends and family, yeah, they were secondary characters. And the rest of you guys, yeah, you're extras. Who cares? Maybe watching 24 Marvel movies really did take their toll on me. But, see, I wasn't like Thanos, where I thought I was some sort of chosen one. But my delusions were still there, albeit very subtle. I saw it in my slight mannerisms that betrayed a hint of supremacism, like thinking I was better just because I got better grades. But the thing with thinking you're superior is that you're, sp you're spending every second, every moment of the day, validating your own worth by comparing yourself to someone else. And the supremacism sword is double-edged. After all, it's all fine and dandy, basking in my own arrogance, thinking I'm the best, thinking I'm the top of the world, until eventually there comes along a person where even I, despite my cockiness, cannot say I was better than. And that person would come to haunt me. They were the 100, they were the great to my good, the 100 to my 99, but never really got 99, so maybe 100 to my 85 is better. <laughs> Uh, the, med um, the infallible Miss Goody Two Shoes to my mediocre. And that really affected me. So I began my descent to the first of Kubler Ross's five stages of grief. Denial. Because to me, that was unacceptable. There was no way an extra was taking my spotlight. So what did I do? I did the only thing I could. I made excuses. You know, all of Miss Goody Two Shoes' major achievements, all of her projects, all of her good grades, they were all attributed to something I did not have. An opportunity that I did not come across. Because in my story, I was, I was always the victim. And I moved on to stage two. Anger. <sighs> this world is unfair. Why does Miss Goody Two-Shoes get these opportunities and I don't? It's just stupid. And quickly moving on to stage three. Bargaining. Okay, okay, she may be better than me in this, but I definitely got her beaten mass. Not really, but, you know. Depression. I'll never be as good as her. I'll never prove to the world that I'm a good. No one's going to ever acknowledge me. And quickly moving on to stage five. <laughs> Acceptance. Maybe not so quick. It took quite a while. But anyway, once I ditched that one-dimensional lens in which I saw the world, I realized that everyone has their own stories. Everyone has their own struggles, their own problems to overcome. And I can't undermine their achievements in favor of my own. I wasn't the main story of the main character of my story anymore. Everyone had their own lives to live. You see, that's all about changing perspective. I, I liken this whole endeavor to climbing a mountain, you know. Like, the more you succeed, the higher you climb, and the more you feel like you're on top of the world. But eventually, everyone falls. And it hurts being brought back down to the earth. You might as well put a gravestone on the, top, on the foot of the mountain that says, here, rip, here lies my ego. But the most important thing is that you don't lie sprawled across the floor forever. You have to pick yourself up, climb that mountain once again. This time, you'll reach even greater heights, because now you know where you went wrong. You'll climb higher and higher before. So, in all honesty, it's been only mere months since I face planted after the biggest fall of my life. And I guess this is my first step back to the top. 
but wouldn't it be great if we all reached there? The top of the mountain, your full potential. And that's the whole point of this talk. I'm not here to tell you how to climb that mountain of yours. I'm only 17 years old with very, very little experience. I know very, very little of the world. I'm not going to be so preposterous and suggest that I can tell you how to do this. But hopefully, I've given you a new pair of lens to see and to see how to climb to the top. How one path can actually be hundreds. A way to transform your perspective. Thank you very much.